Hi, I'm Daryl Tank, and I want to go ahead and give you a couple tips today that I think is a real common problem that people run into. And uh, there are a number of things that, oh, are not even necessary for drawing. I have my collection of tools and supplies down to a very minimal amount. And, uh, and it makes it less confusing, which one do I choose, and all these things. There are specific tools for specific reasons. And uh, one that I've enjoyed uh, most of my life drawing is, since I was a kid is the kneaded eraser. And yet there's still a few problems that I see people running into and they just don't know what to do about it. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the options. There's, uh, there's more uh, you know, brands than these. And yet uh, often what you're going to want to do is have something that is shaped in a way that you can use it the best. And I actually like this uh, teardrop, uh, you know, uh, shape because I have the chance to have a very rounded end and then I can go ahead and regulate my tapping and the pressure and I can vignette something. I can go ahead and even even create, uh, you know, the the highlight in a, in a ball like this if I want to, even though I want to try and draw everything I possibly can because it, it, it continues uh, with the same texture, whether it's light or dark, that I started uh, you know, drawing with. Uh, but this uh, uh, kneaded eraser is wonderful because it will just take off that very light layer, which I showed you in the last video, uh, that uh, often will uh, you know, allow you to make corrections. It'll allow you to have more control. Remember we did this last week, talked about the importance of a line, how we could go ahead and make it into an edge to value how we could go ahead and, and uh, put it on so we can actually take it off again by layering and light layers and regulating the amount of value we're going to put on so we can have the ultimate in depth. Always want to have something that's curved, never anything flat, and even this tapered stroke, which is really the base of much of what I do, uh, you'll see this lighter at each end and hits its full value somewhere in here as I glide on and glide off of the paper, making it some, its ultimate contact. You know, maybe not right in the middle, but you know, away from those two ends. Well, these uh, uh, are consistent with the fact that I want everything again to have a gradation, a contour, and the stroke lends itself to that. The way I build away from that stroke adds to that, and and that's going to give me a wonderful opportunity for realism. But I want to be able to have this and not this. This is something that you can end up with real easy and you wonder what in the world do I do with this? It looks like it's just, you know, had it. And why not just throw it away and start over? They're not that expensive. You could do that, but there's not necessary. This uh, racer has probably been through much more than this one and yet I can recondition it. And I just wanted to go ahead and let you have an idea of what you can do. Sometimes it's a little hard because maybe you have arthritis or whatever. It's also a good exercise for that. But you can put it in your hand as long as you don't have oils and, and lotions and warm it up. This will help uh, get you started with something that's pliable. And I want to be able to, you know, it's kind of kneading, uh, but I want to stretch it. Almost like you would do silly putty until it just almost was ready to break or did break. And I want to be able to do that and it'll start fluffing up. I want this to be soft because, oh, you have such wonderful things you can do with it. Not having a hard eraser it keeps you from having too harsh of a, an erased mark. Uh, we don't want something that is more along the line of a, a polymer eraser or something on the end of a pencil. And we're so used to seeing that that we may not realize this is just a wonderful, wonderful option. Well, you see, I've really messed up the shape now, but I'm going to keep pulling. Again, be, be patient. If it's too hard for you to pull on, just keep warming up in your hand. I would not put it in a microwave. I wouldn't do a number of things that would artificially heat it up. But this is blending into the rest of the, of the eraser. Now, if you have dog and cat hair in it and everything else, well, that's, that's maybe something you're going to have to decide. Maybe the cat is, or the dog has been chewing on it. Uh, then you're going to have to decide what you're going to do about starting over with a new one. So have one ready, you know, that you can go ahead and jump to if you need to. And again, they come in, you know, different sizes. 
Uh, often this is uh, something that is a little small for me, but some ladies like to have, uh, you know, that uh, smaller one to fit in her hand. And I like the bigger one, which is usually about a half again as big. And even if I had two of these to put together, it would make a nice, uh, a nice size for me. Um, so we'll go ahead and keep doing this. Let me get these off to the side and pull it different directions. If it breaks, just just fold it back onto itself. And but if you're careful, you don't have to have a break. And this is getting softer and softer and softer. It's surprising how many people don't I haven't had the opportunity to find this out. And even people in my classes that come in, I, I show them every so often uh, how to recondition their eraser. Look at how bright it's getting. That's just amazing. It's no longer that dirty eraser or that one that's collected so much graphite. It's just getting lighter and lighter and lighter. In fact, look at this. It even gets lighter than the first, uh, you know, brand new one in the package as you take it out. We're gonna vary a little bit in color. There are some brands, and maybe I can go ahead and do a test on some of those later, that are, uh, they tend to be a little bit softer and don't get quite as hard. Uh, I don't know what they're doing with them, but uh, I'll find out what those brands are at some point, and we'll go ahead and try to let you have some options. Well, let's just do this a few more times. There are several racers that I like for my technique, the five pencil method. And, uh, and I think it's good to have one for special occasions, but this one is probably more versatile than any of them so far. I can even go ahead and do uh, fine hairs, taking it out of the value that I put down. Um, clean up edges. Okay, now I'm just gonna gradually start forming this and putting it into a more of a ball. And if you decide you like the uh, the size and shape uh, a little larger, then you can put another one together with it. Probably be nice to be able to see this from the side, but you get the idea. I could just keep modeling it with my with my thumb and uh, fingers and. And you want to avoid having just deep uh, folds in this. So you want to work it until you have all these as part of the ball without any grooves. Even though from time to time you'll have to refresh it a little bit, you know, even just working in some of those folds and grooves. Now it seems like we'd be in pressing it together and forming this ball that it would be getting hard again, but it, it doesn't. I use it in a tapping uh, motion. And so that too could probably compact it a little bit more. Let's go ahead and try and fold this in too. Because when I tap on a, on a portion of my drawing that I have really quite refined, uh, if, I, if I get careless, I just want you to think about uh, taking care of those folds and pits and whatever and try and get it as round as you can. Because if I got careless, I could actually leave a pattern in certain places where it wouldn't be quite uh, you know, evenly removing the graphite and you just have to work harder at it. Not impossible, but Okay, now I'm going to put more weight on one side than the other. So I'm going to go ahead and almost take the heel of my hand and start creating this cone or this teardrop. I don't want a ridge around here. I just want it as round as I can get it. Wonderful, wonderful shape. Versatile easily manipulated into exactly what you want. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in my hand like this and let it, you see it twirling in my hand? I'm going to put a little pressure on the end and I'm just going to work this down until it is actually quite a point. 
Now this is what I call the teardrop. And, uh, and this can fit in my hand so well. I can be tapping away and decide I want to pull something off and just barely touch. This way you can go ahead and refine something that may not have been absolutely perfect. Let's just see. It's like right here. You see that little dot there, that little darker dot? And, and it's good to practice with this too because the more pressure you put taking that dot off, uh, you can go ahead and, and leave actually a lighter place, which you could easily slip in though and actually put in a little value. And because everything that I try to do uh, has a, a gradation uh, from light to dark, uh, that allows me to repair things a lot easier too because I don't have to worry about having a hard mark, you know, like this. I'm trying to scribble in a patch. Well, that isn't going to work so well. You know, so now if I felt that this was maybe too long or I wanted a little bit more gentle uh, taper, you know, a, a value, I could come in here and go lighter, 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 lighter without so much pressure, and I can do that. If I felt that I wanted to have it, you know, I wanted to have it from dark to light, and then back up to dark, and then to light, I could take out this center section. I think this is what we did here last week. And if I wanted to just take this back to another value, period, I could go ahead and take off a level of value, a level of graphite that I put on there. Now, I think last time I was showing that we can take a hard line through here. It has the capability of doing that. But on the other hand, for repairing, it's a lot better if you don't have that hard line in there, that everything has a transition and then it fits with your, with your ability to have your little tapered stroke, which blends into what you had before. And you can continue on, you know, making this all darker without ever really having it show. Let's go ahead and do that. And you don't want to be afraid to go ahead and put more strokes in there than, you know, it's good to practice to see how you can lay these next to each other. And we'll do an exercise like that too. It's the patches exercise. And I don't want to uh, just ignore some of those patches and some of those spheres and different exercises because they're such a good warm up. I don't care how good you are. It still is great to practice just as a musician would practice, uh, even accomplished in the lead uh, violinist in the uh, orchestra or whatever it happens to be. But I don't want you to be afraid to come in and refine something until it's pretty much just what you want. Um, okay, so now, see I can take this and I can quickly fold this over and I can make a blade. Now it's quite a bit wider, so it has quite a bit of stability. And we don't have to press real hard because we've just lightly put on the layers. But again, I can come in here and I could take out a hair. If that was what I had to do to have one of those flyaway hairs full of life well, that's catching a little reflection, uh, I can go ahead and also, you know, take. Uh, take it and do all kinds of things with it. I know I don't have much value on here, so it might be a little bit hard to see. And I want you to give me some feedback and tell me whether I need to go ahead and reapproach something so that you can see it a little better. Uh, this was just a drawn line without any taper on it. You see the difference? It just suddenly starts. And that's what happens when you just go and draw a line. You want to have something that has much more life in it. And so that momentum doesn't mean you have to do it real fast but having your hand down and making sure that you have this as a pivot point and then you're you're able to go ahead and act like a compass and you can make this into what I call a compass stroke so you have that opportunity to come in here landing softly on the paper coming around and we'll do some other exercises too that help you realize you've got the right curve you don't want to get too like this because you can you can end up by having something too tight and you don't have that flow and grace. So I like to hold it about in the middle of the shaft and let that thing just flow on. And uh, the other end, the one you take off with, is always a little bit easier to taper than it is on the landing. So if you find that that's just kind of more like a thud, and then you want to go ahead and practice to see if you can just glide on and glide off. But now these, uh, these erasers again, uh, there's a number there's a number of brands and so 
Uh, I think that Grumbacher even makes one, and uh, there's probably many out there. What I think I'm going to try and do is I'm going to contact some of the companies and see if they can send me a number of their supplies, and, uh, and we'll do some reviews, too, just so we can get off to a good start before we actually get into a project, or maybe during the project. And we'll uh, go ahead and find out if there is a, an advantage uh, with one eraser over the other or pencil over the other and we'll just start going through so you can have the the best opportunity and the best outcome and express what you're drawing as best you can so we'll see you in the next video a little tip uh, helped you a little bit you might find that you have a number of these uh, racers laying around or put in a, in a place that you didn't know what to do with them and now you have an idea if you're if you don't feel you have the strength then don't forget put that in your hand and warm it up and or maybe you can have somebody with young hands and they can go ahead and have fun doing those for you. So uh, see you next time. Glad you joined me. Bye.